Greetings Petrolheads, my name is the Tom, you're on my gaming channel and it's time for another episode of Automation the Car Company Tycoon game. Um, today I'm gonna build another replica and uh, Reversed Place requested me to build a BMW replica, any BMW they said, preferably like one of the early 2000s like E46, E E60, or anything like that and since I love the E46 and I actually want a 325 CI as my next car I'm gonna build that and uh, so what do we need in the way as a little bit of an overhang um, like the the top and goes a little bit backwards there and it's relatively low. Also the back window is a little bit steeper. Like that. Other than that I can't really... Other than that I think it's pretty much... Pretty much like this. And that a little bit lower. And uh, yeah. Actually don't get fooled here. This one is the four-door version and that one the right one is the two-door version the coupe that i have right here and because i'm because i personally want a black one i'm gonna make this one black as well um also i should point out that multiple people have requested me to build more engines along with my replicas and uh okay so I'll do it this time. I'll, I'll do another one this time. Like, can you remember exactly what I said last last time? Did I really say I'm not gonna build any more engines on my replicas? If so, I didn't mean it. Um, what I meant to say is, I'm not. I'm definitely not going to build. And the engines on all my car replicas. That is just not gonna happen. Especially on cars where I think the engines are not particularly interesting to me at least. Maybe because I don't like the car that much. Or maybe because, you know, I feel like the engine d doesn't really matter in a car. For example, like the a Chevy Chevette replica that I did a couple of weeks ago. I don't really think the engine, the engines in there were that special or that worth noting, you know. So that uh, I'm I'm sorry, but uh, I I think that this, it was just not mandatory to build an engine replica of that. Good, but here we are building the, the headlights because. There is no headlight fixture that resembles... By the way, I'm building the post-facelift version. That's why I'm, I selected um, year 2003. And there is no fixture already in the game that resembles those headlights quite enough for me to justify using it rather than building the headlights myself. With that out of the way, I um, I am going to continue with these headlights here. Uh, that is a little bit too long. And now they go. Now I need a pretty pretty short one of these here. And then to round them up. I'm gonna put one of those down here. Like that. And so we got the... Uh, they go a little bit further though. Those are a little bit bigger as well. So yeah. The overall headlights are just a little bit too small.
the engine in it is not though. We're gonna build it and I have looked up the specs this time. At least as much as I could find on Wikipedia. Which is not ev every single detail, but many. Is this really that... Is this really that long? I feel like this is a little bit shorter. Like the, the whole taillight and uh, the whole headlights are a little bit shorter in, in height. And uh, yeah, that is more along the lines of what I was what I was aiming for. Good. But I still think they are a little bit longer than they are here, and maybe I should ex excuse me extend this one a little bit further as well. Goes. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Before we fill this whole area out, I'm gonna put down the the single, you know, light bulbs in there. One of which is like right there and relatively big. And then there is another one that is smaller than the first one, and, and it goes like here. We're gonna get to the indicators a little bit later. Come on. Good. We're gonna get to the indicators a little bit later, but first I'm gonna fill this whole section out. And uh, the game feels really quiet now that the uh, music has faded away. There will be some more pretty soon, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, for now we're just gonna do our due diligence here. shape and yeah, put a small one of those down here. good and now it's time to put down all the indicators you know um I think I feel like this this facelifted version has some pretty interesting looking indicators see excuse me why can I not see them okay good um, right they go all the way here this this entire section that I covered with the uh, with the oval headlight there. That is all gonna be orange because it's all, you know, orange. Functionally, an indicator on the real car. And uh, we're also gonna. Put down one of those like here. And to round it up. Good. So there's the headlights. I think those look pretty, pretty close to the originals. I like it. <laughs> um, then we have the number plate like right in the center, right there. Nothing more, nothing really more to it. 
and then we have a grill and some vents on the bottom end. I am gonna choose this piece right here despite the fact that if you zoom in here you can see the, radi the radiator so it's not like an actual mesh like right here where you can't see through here you can though but it's it's all right it's good enough gonna extend this thing and then we need some vents as well these and then turn them around and then rotate them appropriately There we go, I think, uh, let's make him a little bit, oh, come on, a little bit longer here. And it does have some fog lights in, in those vents. there I'm pretty I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the with the front end so we're gonna go to the side where it has some pretty small right indicators like there and some very simple door handles on the rear end First of all, we have the badge up here, and then some pretty damn simple taillights to make. They're not gonna look very close to the originals, unfortunately, but um, yeah, we're gonna start with the red ones, and as you can see here, this body is not it's not uh, quite refined yet so it may generate some you know holes something like that that look a little bit distracting that you know would be a little bit disturbing but um yeah we'll have to make do with it anyway i actually i think those go further up Maybe even a little bit bigger, if I had to guess. Now the white ones... Go like there. And yeah. We got plenty of holes here. Which obviously the real car does not have because it's a BMW. Good. Now what we also have in the taillights is a very small detail, like there. And then, now that we're basically done with the taillights, we're gonna build, we're gonna put the number plate down. It is between the red taillights. And then... We have a bumper there. We can put down some some of these. Because that is plastic after all. Despite the fact that it's a German car. It is still plastic and not, you know, you know, you don't want to get chrome or something damaged because it's cause it looks terrible and it's, exp it's quite expensive. So, yeah, that's the whole reason for that. And then I'm gonna adjust the placement of this of these uh, braking lights in a second. First, I'm gonna put down the exhausts. 
jaw like right here and only on the left side and the braking lights are right above them can you see them here no cannot so you know what i'm gonna delete this plastic right here and uh, yeah that's basically it does not have any sort of sports diffuser or anything like it at least uh, the standard 3 series doesn't have it uh, where does the where does the oh the letters go they go like here three we're gonna make a 325 ci so i'm gonna write that down wait a second pretty displeased with how, how those numbers work in the sense that you know you can't see them while you're adjusting their placement so that needs to be mirrored oh. three two five actually we should get those closer together V25 and then give me a C and then give me an I oh you can see that one while you're adjusting the size huh Three to five CI. Oh, we still need to make sure this doesn't appear on the other side. Three to five CI. Good. Now, obviously, well, we're gonna make it black again. Obviously, it's rear wheel drive. So, let's actually name it at this point BMW E46 facelift. And that is the V25 CI. Good. Now for the engine. It is after all. It is obviously obviously an inline six, which is why I at first selected an inline four. Anyway, um, we have two and a half liters of capacity. We Got a border stroke ratio of 84 times 75. So it's a pretty pretty short stroke. 29 2494. Okay, good. We have dual overhead cams with four bars per cylinder. We have no VVL, but we have double VVT. We got and now there's the details that I haven't been able to look up. I think forged steel, and then probably I beam steel Conrad's because it because it is after all pretty expensive. Yeah, I can't. I I haven't really looked up the compression ratio either. Maybe it. Maybe that. Maybe I can uh, see that on the English page of that, on the English Wikipedia of that engine. No, I cannot find the compression ratio or the cam profile. We do have VVT on all cams though, so intake and out, out, take, whatever. 
it's naturally aspirated, I can tell you that much. We're running multipoint injection on premium. And there's something again that I don't quite know. Is it? Is it I, I don't think it's that leaned out, to be honest. Because we do need to make 192 horsepower with that multipoint EFI. So I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Ignition timing relatively high. A red line of 7000 RPM. No, actually 6500, excuse me. And we do need to make those 192 horsepower at 6000 RPM. I'm gonna say it's a tubular exhaust. Too straight for mufflers if I'm not mistaken. Well, actually, probably different. Oh, so we need to make the power earlier and we need more power. We do have quite some run left to play with though. Good, so we are making 192 horsepower. Uh, we need to make 245 newton meters at 3500 so I'm guessing we have lower cam profile and probably a higher fuel mixture This is too much. Uh, this is too little. How about long tubers? Short cast? No. Two hundred forty. Straight up, I have no idea how I'm gonna achieve those numbers. Or is it actually direct injected? Wait a minute. Uh, no, 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 it is not direct injected. Or at least I can't find any information saying that it is. And since direct injection was not very common yet at that point in time, I don't think it has it. From the cylinder will give us less torque but a little bit more power. I don't think it's got a performance intake to be honest. I don't know how to achieve those numbers anymore. <laughs> but if I go down here, we have lots less torque, but some more room to play with as far as the compression goes. I'm just content when. I'm just gonna be content if we actually achieve 192 horsepower and 245 newton meters of torque that looks like a pretty sweet torque curve to be honest with you Three. 
192. There we go. And 246 newton meters. That's actually one newton meter more than we would have needed. But, you know, you can never have too much torque, can you? Alright, so let's go to the trim. We have a manual 5 speed gearbox. Top speed is going to be around 240. Second gear goes just above 100 kilometers an hour. I don't think it's got a limited slip diff, or at least not a standard. It will run on the medium compound road tires on 16s. And comes on. Oh, I forgot to flare the wheel arches. It comes in 225 standard though. Are the standard wheel arches really that narrow on this body? You've gotta be kidding me. No wider than 175s on the front. Okay, well, this replica right here will have it difficult to put down all of its horses then but you know can't have everything 20 straight up I don't know how big the brakes are and it is probably semi-clad we don't have any lips to worry about so we don't worry about wing angles either cooling airflow needs to be much lower I don't do we have brake airflow probably not well actually I think yes a little bit through these vents so let's put down a little bit here uh, five seats with premium interior and standard entertainment we have traction control oh, you know what is DSC it stands for dynamic stability control so is that actually would you call that a traction control system or a stability control system? I don't know. Since it says dynamic stability control, I'm gonna go for stability here. And it's got pretty high tech safety, so um, yeah. And actually, Cone Dodger asked me on the Carinthian Motors lineup review why I would why I did not select um, progressive springs over standard springs and the reason for that is because you can see that standard springs give you better sportiness but lower drivability and comfort and I value sportiness a little bit higher that's why I'm that's why I'm uh, I'm going for standard springs we're gonna go for a setup that is like between comfort and sporty. But rather, but rather on the sporty side of things. Uh, so let's go for 300 here and 200 there. Right height is somewhere in the middle. Fourteen thirty-nine, uh, fourteen forty kilos. I think that's a little bit too much, actually. The economy is a little bit lower. Total costs are pretty realistic, actually, for what it cost. Seven point seven seconds. We can make it faster, can't we? Oh, it actually does have a higher estimated top speed here. Point six. So we cannot make it faster than 7.6. Honestly, I think that's too slow for this car. Because it. Because I think. Yeah, obviously, that's because of the tires. It can't put its power down. So to compensate for that, I'm gonna give it a diff. Actually, can't go fa faster than. 7.5 so 
If you learned anything besides how to build an E46 coupe replica today, then it is that I'm an idiot, which I'm guessing you, can, you could say that we, it's not really something new to learn, because you, you guys probably already knew that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode nonetheless. If you did, please click the like button, it helps out a great deal. Also consider subscribing if you want to see more content in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.